Yeah, I I would say just as, as a small aside, that's why reading, as I'm almost done with, uh, The Rise and Fall of the Third Reich. Oh, yeah. Is, uh, it it's uh refreshes the resets the palette of your understanding of what is good and evil in the world yeah. that I think is really useful n now like you know what helps me be really positive and almost naive on Twitter uh, and in the world is by just studying history yeah and and uh, comparing it to how amazing things are uh, today but in that time what would you do? What does a brave mind do? And not just uh, acts of bravery, but how do you be effective in that? And that's something I often think about. It's sometimes easy to be an activist uh, in terms of just saying stuff. It's hard to be effective at your activism. One of the big questions historians have uh, constantly is how did this happen? A, it's to make sure it doesn't happen again, but this is Germany. This is not some kind of weirdo cult nation. They're very advanced, very in the land of poets and philosophers. How did it get to that point that they're just shooting children and everyone's cheering for this? And and Specifically on the anti-Semitism and the Holocaust. But just the, no, the whole totalitarianism, the cult of Hitler and you know, just this whole kind of... Thing and so there's this sorry to sorry to drop, but there's two sides. I don't know if you want to separate them. One is the totalitarianism and the the entire the entirety of the Nazi regime, and then there's the Holocaust, which is like you know going. I would say, like very specifically, uh, as I think you're about to describe, is like you know targeting Jews very much so. I don't know if you see those as two separate things. I think they're very interconnected. But I think if you look at it, everyone thinks that they'd be the ones putting up Anne Frank. But if you look at the numbers, they'd be the ones calling the, the right. Stasi on her or the, whoever the people were at the time, and not the Stasi, obviously, uh, and patting themselves in the back for it. So sorry to pause on that. That's a really important thing. If you're listening to this, that, and you were not, and you were in Germany at the time, you would have likely been willing to commit or at least keep a blind eye to the violence against Jews. Like you have to really sit with that idea that you would have been somebody who uh, just sees this and is not bothered by it. And also very likely kind of understand this as a necessary evil or even a necessary good. Yeah, and I think people think that they would be the abolitionists or marching on Selma, the numbers don't, Add, the, add up to that at all. And I think the question would be like, what social, I, my friend was on Tinder, my friend Matt, who's a great dude. And the question was, what's the most controversial opinion you have? This is in New York. And the girl wrote, I hate Trump. And what people perceive themselves as being courageous in saying and doing, and what is the actual social costs of you saying or doing this are two very disconnected things. And we're also trained by corporate media to have completely vapid, uninteresting, banal ideas, and yet regard ourselves as revolutionaries. You know, there are people who still in New York will take pride because they have a gay friend. And it's like, first of all, who cares? But second of all, you are not a hero. And that person's not your prop, by the way. That's another big problem.